Hello, everyone. I am Hao Ting. It is my pleasure to talk about our work on Simba, improved estimation of drug combination synergies with uncertainty quantification. The aim of Simba is to define a quantification framework to accurately estimate uncertainty in synergistic effect of drug combinations. It is important for the uncertainty estimation of drug synergy to be reliable and actionable, so that the output can be used for decision making. However, most of the current drug discovery pipelines lack an appropriate uncertainty estimation for these quantities. To approach this challenge, we propose Simba, a flexible Bayesian approach to estimate the uncertainty of the synergistic efficacy and potency of drug combinations in a robust and calibrated fashion. This can be used to design an effective decision-making system for ranking and prioritizing drug combinations. We focus on the analysis of drug combinations due to its advantages compared to single drug targets. In this study, we work on the AstraZeneca Sanger Dream Challenge, which is a publicly available dataset containing 11.5k experimentally tested drug combinations measuring cell viability over drugs and cancer cell lines. In particular, we focus on these dose response matrices in the pharmacological part of the dataset. Here is a figure that shows what these dose response matrices look like. We have increasing dosages of drug 1 on one axis and increasing dosages of drug 2 on the other axis. The numbers here represent the percentage of a certain cancer cell line that is still alive after applying the drug and waiting for a predefined number of days. The base value represents the plate with no drug and is therefore normalized to 100. Given such a matrix, the next thing to do is to quantify the synergy of the combination. However, one main challenge with synergy quantification is that synergy score is a highly uncertain quantity. The figure here is an example that shows this phenomenon. In this figure, taken from the dream paper, we focus on the drug combination of gefitinib and fovestrin applied on the cell line T47D, which is the light blue point highlighted in the red circle here. This is a combination that appears in both the AZ Sanger Dream Challenge as well as the NCI Almanac screening. Synergy scores for this combination are computed according to the dose response matrices from each of the screenings. The dashed lines here are the decision boundaries between being strongly synergistic or not, as well as being strongly antagonistic or not. As we can see from the light blue point in the red circle, what happens here is that the synergy score is around 8 when computed using the NCI Almanac data, which is a strongly synergistic score. In the meantime, the score is around minus 22 when computed using the DREAM data, which is a strongly antagonistic score, which is the opposite of being synergistic. So there is a large discrepancy here. This is an example showing that the synergy score often have a large amount of uncertainty, which may stem from limited data, noise from the experimental and biological process, as well as unknown ground truths. However, existing synergy quantification frameworks have not taken this uncertainty into account. As a result, decisions are often being made based on point estimates that are often uncertain, which results in worse efficiency in the drug discovery pipeline. Therefore, we argue that we need a principled uncertainty estimation framework for the parameters related to synergy. In addition, another important aspect that should not be ignored is to properly distinguish between synergistic efficacy and synergistic potency. As shown in the figure here, if a combination is synergistically efficacious, then it means the maximum viability is improved. On the other hand, if a combination is synergistically potent, then it means a smaller dosage is required to reach the same level of viability which can potentially reduce off-target toxicity. These are the two different aspects of synergy that should be analyzed separately. However, existing synergy score frameworks have been mixing these two properties into one single score, making it challenging to extract actionable information from the score. This leads to the aim of our work, which is to provide a principled uncertainty estimation for the synergy score, and at the same time, to differentiate between efficacy and potency. For a typical dose response matrix like the one shown in this slide, what most existing frameworks do is provide a single synergy score for the combination. 
For example, the score is 29.54 in Dream, which is quite a high score, showing the combination is synergistic. However, we do not know how uncertain the score is. We also do not know whether the combination is synergistic due to its improved efficacy or improved potency, or both. What Simba provides instead is not just the point estimate, but also the uncertainty around the synergy score. In the meantime, synergy is decoupled into synergistic efficacy and potency. By having this information, we would have a better idea of the synergy profile for this combination, as well as what subsequent steps could be done to this combination. For example, do we need more data to reduce the uncertainty or not? These are the questions that Simba could help to answer. So, to introduce the model, we start from monotherapy and build our model based on the whole equation, which is the classical sigmoidal equation that models the relationship between logarithm of dosage and the response. The parameter E1, or in infinity, quantifies the efficacy of the monotherapy, whereas the parameter C, or IC50, quantifies the potency or sensitivity of the monotherapy. These are the quantities that have been used by biologists for subsequent analysis of the drug. So let's say we now have these six measurements and the task is to fit a model to this data. The classical way is to fit the Hill equation to the six points, which is something like this. However, is this a correct fit or not? We will never really know exactly because the ground truth is unknown. But there are some hints from the data which shows that it may be far from being certain. For example, we can see that the data is noisy because the ground truth should be monotonically decreasing, but we see fluctuations up and down from the data here. In addition, we can see that the response is still quickly decreasing as the dosage increases. There is no sign of convergence yet. However, according to the Hill equation fit, it has already converged at the response of 95 which may not be the most sensible conclusion in this particular case. Let's say we now fit the red curve. We could argue that the red curve is also potentially a suitable fit. However, without further measurements, there is no sufficient information to decide whether the blue curve is a better fit or the red curve is a better one. There is still a large amount of uncertainty here, which deserves to be carefully modeled because a different fit can lead to fundamentally different decisions down the line. So we approach the uncertainty estimation by specifying a Bayesian model where all unknown parameters are treated as random variables instead of point estimates. The uncertainty of the parameters are measured by the posterior distribution, which is proportional to the likelihood times the prior distribution of the parameters. The likelihood is defined to be Gaussian with RID noise, where the mean is parameterized using the Hill equation so that the parameters quantifying efficacy and potency can still be retained. The key reason that we use the Bayesian paradigm instead of the frequentist one is that the data size is very small, noisy, and distorted. By defining a prior distribution for the parameters, overfitting can be reduced, and the output will be conservative if we do not have sufficient evidence. Here we show the prior distributions that we have defined for the parameters. The prior for the infinity is defined by looking at the empirical distribution of infinity from the monotherapies in DREAM. A beta prior is then fitted according to the empirical distribution. This is an example of how information from historical data can be inserted through the priors. Here is an example that shows how the posterior distributions for the potency and efficacy change as more and more measurements are obtained. The green distributions here are the posterior for the efficacy, or in infinity, which has a beta prior, as shown in the top left subfigure, whereas the red distribution here are the posterior distributions for logarithm of IC50, which is the logarithm of the potency. It has a uniform prior. Each light blue curve here is a sample from the posterior mean of the drug response. As we can see, when we have only one point, there is a diverse range of possibilities. As we have more and more points and gain information, the uncertainty decreases. The posterior uncertainty allows us to make decisions about the subsequent actions to be made on these monotherapies. 
Now we move on to combinations. The question now is how to estimate the synergy between drugs as well as the uncertainty of the estimated synergy. For the likelihood model, we adopt the generalized 2D Hill equation developed by MUSIC, which is one of the state-of-the-art parameterization of the dose-response relationship for drug combinations. The crucial reason that we use MUSIC for our likelihood is that they have crucially decoupled efficacy and potency within their framework. So this is the simple model for combinations, where the likelihood is the music parameterization plus RID noise. The prior distributions are natural extensions from monotherapy. Now comes the key part, which is to quantify the synergy and estimate its uncertainty. We define synergistic efficacy by computing delta HSA, which is the reduction of E infinity when the two drugs are combined. For the synergistic potency, we take inspiration from music and quantify it using alpha. When alpha is larger than 1, it means a smaller amount of dosage is required to reach the same level of efficacy when the two drugs are combined. The key thing here and the main difference from music is that we have a probabilistic quantity for both delta HSA and alpha. We compute the probability that a combination is synergistically efficacious or synergistically potent by computing the probability that delta HSA is larger than zero or the probability that alpha is larger than one instead of just a point estimate for them. Here is a case study showing what the output from Simba looked like given this particular combination of AKT and ADAM17 on the cell line BT20. This is a combination which has received a positive synergistic score in the original DREAM dataset. However, according to subfigure D here, there is a large underlying uncertainty, especially in terms of synergistic efficacy. In terms of synergistic potency, we are a bit more certain. This result shows the need of designing more experiments to reduce the uncertainty around the synergistic efficacy before making any decision on whether the combination is truly synergistically efficacious or not. In contrast, this is an example of another combination where the data here shows strong evidence that the combination is strongly synergistic in terms of both potency and efficacy, with a probability of nearly 100 for both quantities according to our model. In addition, Simba can also accurately predict the responses for unseen dosages. The task here is to predict the responses for the shaded unseen cells in the matrices. This is not the main goal of Simba, but it is a useful test to show that Simba has not sacrificed prediction accuracy for uncertainty estimation. Simba has outperformed state-of-the-art deterministic and probabilistic method in terms of test root mean squared error and test log likelihood on both the DREAM and the NCI Almanac dataset. Here is a plot that shows more details of how Simba compares with the three deterministic methods, which are music, rate, and the effective dose model. On these scatter plots, each axis represents the root mean squared error of one method, and each point represents one combination. If the method on the x-axis is stronger, then it will have a lower root mean squared error on average, which would result in more points above the y equals x diagonal line. On the contrary, if the method on the x-axis is less performing, then more points will be below the y equals x diagonal line, because the RMC is higher on average. According to this rule, if we focus on the subfigures in the blue rectangle here, we can see that Simba is outperforming the other method significantly on this task by having much fewer points below the y equals x diagonal line. In addition, Simba is also much less prone to overfitting when the data size is small. This can be observed by looking at the plots in the red rectangle here and compare them to the blue ones. In the red plot, the size of the training set is much smaller. As a result, the RMSEs for MUSIC, BRAID, and the effective dose model have increased significantly, but for Simba, the increase is much less significant, showing its robustness against overfitting. Simba is also better calibrated than existing models. 
Here, we perform the KS test between the uniform distribution and accumulated probabilities for the left out responses. This test is performed across every combination in the dream training set, resulting in a p-value for each combination. For a better calibrated model, there will be fewer p-values smaller than 0.05. The result shows that Simba is significantly more well calibrated than music. In summary, Simba provides a well calibrated and decoupled uncertainty estimation for the synergistic potency and efficacy of a combination. The explainable parameters from the Hill equation are preserved. The flexible priors allow a route to conveniently add existing biological knowledge or insight from historical data. Simba can also reliably predict unseen responses within a dose response matrix. The next step would be to incorporate Simba in prediction models to investigate whether the prediction of unobserved dose response surfaces and synergies can be improved by the additional information that comes from having an uncertainty estimation for the parameters. We would like to thank Matea, Pietro, Krishna, Paul, and Elisaveta for their valuable comments and suggestions. We would also like to thank our funders for generously supporting our work. Thank you very much for listening.